following program is being brought to you on the Voice America Health and Wellness Channel. For more information about our network and to check our additional show hosts and topics of interest, please visit voiceamericahealth.com. The Voice America Talk Radio Network is the worldwide leader in live Internet talk radio. Visit voiceamerica.com. The views and ideas expressed on the following program are strictly those of the host or guests and do not necessarily reflect the views and ideas held by the Voice America Talk Radio Network, its staff, and management. Welcome to Straight Talk with Sandra Reich. Are you trying to master the game of life without success? There are secrets and strategies to living your best life. We'll share some of them with you on today's show. Take advantage of this series to become an expert at relationships. All relationships. It's time to live the life that you deserve to live. Now, here's your host, Sandra Reich. Welcome to Straight Talk with Sandra Reich, a show to live your very best life. And uh, a topic that's probably one of the topics I talk about the most when I go out speaking uh, in my private practice and a topic that affected my life very, very personally. Um, The topic is about caretaking. And it's a funny thing. I always explain to people that I am a professional caretaker, meaning I get paid to take care of other people in my private practice. I am supposed to do it. I get paid for it. It's a good thing. I get complimented for it and yet if I do it the moment I walk out of the door of the office I am in pure dysfunction how could this be well today we're going to talk about how that could be it sounds so nice to caretake others I will explain the dangers and I have a great guest which I'll tell you all about uh, before we really get into it because it's a hot topic and um, one that people have a lot of opinions on and a lot of people really relate to it I just want to invite our listeners to call in with questions join the conversation at one 472 again that's one 472 has caretaking gotten you in trouble? I bet it has. Uh, before we go any further, let me introduce my one of my favorite guests of all time. We're actually leaving tonight right after the show for our 13th Women's Retreat. So she is my co-director in Empowered Women Workshops. She is a top psychotherapist at the Montreal Center for Anxiety and Depression. She is a body specialist. She is a brilliant, wonderful, amazing person filled with knowledge. And before I hand it over to you, I should say that one of the reasons caretaking became such a huge topic is because, like myself, she is a recovering caretaker she was struggling in her own life and we used to get together and talk about caretaking all the time and how we're getting into trouble but we'll get to that in a moment welcome back to straight talk mate gomez Thank you, Sandra. It's a delight to be back. Oh, it's so nice to always have you here. I wish we could have you more often. We tend to get you on the night that we're going to the retreat because you're coming to my house yes. anyway. So it's convenient. It works out very well. Um, but you are the person to talk to about the topic of caretaking. And I kind of say that the reason you're the person to talk to is we went through this disease <laughs> together. It is a disease. It is a disease. I love that you say that, actually, because it's it, it's definitely, it takes hold of your life, definitely, and it just enters every little corner of your life, and then you're stuck, and you don't know how to get out. Yeah, so for, for people listening right now, but like we'll go back in time on how someone becomes a caretaker, because mm-hmm. we're not born caretakers. We are socialized to be caretakers. But before we get to all that, someone somewhere is listening going, I don't understand. What are they talking about? What could possibly be the problem about caretaking? Why is this an issue? So why would I say that what I do at work is noble and I get complimented and paid for it? And why is it bad if I do it outside of work? Well, that's a good question, but there is a major, major difference is that when you and I are at work, there's an exchange there. We're getting paid for this, so it's a service. And when you go out into the world and you give that same kind of service for what in return, then it becomes blurry. Are yeah. you are you waiting for something in return? Most people are, but they don't really know about it. Right, so again, so that's a really well-stated point, so I'm gonna go right to that, is relationships are based on reciprocity. So other than parent to child, that's the one relationship that's different, but the other ones, 
friendship, romantic reciprocity. Mm -hmm. So in a therapeutic relationship, the client pays and you provide service. And in outside of the office, if I'm doing that and there's no reciprocity, then the relationship is starting to become dysfunctional. And I'd add on to that, that, you know, and this is always the crux of the issue. I always bring this up at talks when I go speak and there's this uncomfortable laughter in the audience when I say, here's the question. What is the secret wish of every caretaker? So for people listening, take a second and think about that. What is the secret wish of every caretaker? Hmm. Go ahead, Maite. To be taken care of. And then I usually say, and how's that working for you? And then there's really laughter. (laughs) Has that ever worked for you, actually? No, it never works. So... The problem is, and that's what I usually say next, I go, how's it working for you? So the problem is, if I do it at work, okay, great. So there's an exchange. But on top of it, I'm very tempted. I'm a recovering caretaker because I think it's like alcoholism. If I take care of people around me, is that going to invite them to take care of me? And may I ask, and I'll allow you to answer this question, is why doesn't it work? It should work, right? I'm going to take care of a lot of people, and then they're going to want to take care of me, right? Mm. I don't think that human behavior goes that way exactly. I've tried it, uh-huh. and for me, it hasn't worked. Okay. So, so why is that? I well, I don't like. Let me play devil's advocate. Why, why not? Why not? Well, you know, we've talked about this uh, a lot, but there is definitely an exchange that you know the caretaker does a lot, a lot, a lot, and then the other person becomes just habituated about receiving all of this. It's just. This is you who you are. So why would they give anything in return? Actually, you're giving it all away without asking anything in return. So we start to be in a relationship where there's an overfunctioner, which is the caretaker, and an underfunctioner, which is the person receiving. Okay, so that's that brings up also something about the fact that caretakers tend to attract underfunctioners because the caretaker, another synonym for caretaking is control. We yeah. like to control our circumstances. We like to, um, you know, I'm going to take care of you, but you have to do what I say you should do. And that's the deal, right? Because I'm going to tell you what to do and you better listen to me. But usually is that something that someone says or it's what? unspoken deal it's an unspoken deal because here's what happens so you come to me with a problem and i tell you this is what you need to do to solve your problem when you don't listen to me i then get mad at you okay because the thing is that okay what we're sort of circling around is nothing's free in life altruism doesn't really exist and people will argue with that people will say altruism does exist and i will say to you i'm not saying people get very worried about this i do want to clarify people do good things oh yes and there is goodness in us but as our human nature is when we do something good we feel good about ourselves so we still get a payoff and i love that you know i think that you're one of the first person who ever said that a lot and i'm like that is so true that's really so brilliant because of course there's a payoff yeah i mean if i see someone that wants to come in and I decide that I hold the door for them you know they might say thank you and it feels doubly good but they might not but I am still left with the feeling of you know I did something nice now yeah yeah exactly okay so then if I'm doing good deeds for other people um, you know am I going to say you owe me Not necessarily, Mm. but again, there's going to be a sense of like, look what a nice person I am. I'm doing these things for you. And um, eventually also caretaking, and we're going to get into this, becomes very, very exhausting also. I'm going to start to feel like, really, you're coming to me about a problem again. There's a lot of levels of problems, which we'll try to get to through the hour. But fundamentally, we want to start with the premise that caretaking, um, when it's not in a professional situation, is actually quite dysfunctional it's suggesting that the other person doesn't know what they're doing it's suggesting that you're going to protect them from errors and we all know that people learn from falling on their face so So that's not good they don't get the natural consequences that's right natural consequences well stated and um on top of it if the secret wish of a caretaker is to be taken care of I'm, no one's going to take care of me because they're just going to expect me to give and give. And, you know, I run the couple retreats and I run the women retreats with you. And I can't tell you in a given day today, including today, how many phone calls I get from women. And we should mention that women um, are socialized to be caretakers. We watch our mothers oh, yes. um, and, and we are, learn at a young age that we are, you know, take supposed to take care of others. It's inherent in our feminism. And we have to be careful about that because it's lovely to a point. 
I agree with you. I mean, for me, the way I was raised is, you know, a good girl is actually a caretaker. Absolutely. That's just bad news. Yeah. So you end up growing up with, you know, already aligned with having this kind of addiction. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, after in the second segment, we're going to talk about the difference between caretaking and kindness. So for people listening, you're going, oh, you can't be kind anymore. You absolutely can be kind. Caretaking and kindness are not the same thing. So that will be coming up. So, you know, d- don't go away for that. But to come back to your point of how women are often socialized, absolutely. We are taught at a young age to read other people's cues. If yeah. you're a really good caretaker, you grew up in a family where you were encouraged to read other people's cues. Perhaps someone in your family wasn't well. Yeah. Uh, perhaps someone had um, substance abuse problem who knows perhaps parents were very busy so you become very attuned to reading cues which could later make you a great psychologist definitely psychotherapist yeah just saying oh, but it works it works there but it then works it well works. but like it's not that fun to be you at a dinner party because you're picking up everybody's cues and everybody's sort of relying on you to be the emotional barometer that's a problem she's laughing yeah it's exhausting to be a caretaker yeah it's exhausting yeah it's you don't exhausting. you just don't want that and so the thing that happens is that you you're going to keep wanting to read someone's cues and help you have the answers. So you're going to help them fix it. And little by little, they're getting fed and you're like literally starving to death because no one's coming to take care of you. And yeah, that's true. Yeah. And when, when you're describing this, you know, the person could be, you know, just going through some struggles and then they start to lean on you. And then what happens? they start to be a little bit lazy, right? So they could very well be functioning well, but as they're entering, you know, orbiting towards a caretaker, they start start to be a little bit lazy. They start to under-function. All of a sudden, they're not able to find their answers. It's, yeah, and people will say, "Well, why? Why would people do that? Like, are like is my is my like husband just an honest guy? Is he an exploitive man?" And it's sort of subtle. It's like unconscious almost. If I do so much for you, then perhaps you don't have to do so much work. It's not that you're mean. It's human nature. If we can walk through the door, we tend to walk through the door. Yeah, I'm always reminded by stop signs. Like, exactly. why don't we do our full stops? How many of you did your full stop today? And if you did, you probably got a ticket recently. That's yeah. Otherwise, you didn't do your full stop. We just are boundary, like, violators yes, a little bit. I guess why? We are we mean? I wouldn't say we're mean. <laughs> I, I would say that, you know, maybe we're a little bit lazy. If you can get away with it, it's easier to do your stop for 30 seconds than, well, not 30 seconds, but for <laughs> half, half a second and for three full seconds, you go, eh. You know, so I I must admit I do that myself. So, yeah, it's human behavior. Yeah, it really is human nature. So you mentioned the over-functioning, under-functioning dynamic, which is very, goes with caretaking, because if I'm doing everything in my marriage, for example, Mm. then my husband keeping with this series starts to sit back a little bit I start to get a bit more resentful and but he doesn't come take care of me because he figures this is a pretty good deal it doesn't make my husband a bad guy it makes him human yeah uh, what happens if I stop over functioning oh well I'm guessing that you're going to be a you're going to have someone who's a bit sour on the other side of the room okay but that's normal wouldn't you and say th- oh absolutely and then well then they have to step it up Right. You know? so but but the thing is, wouldn't you say, you know, if in the example you just gave, you know, you just changed the dance, right? So you were doing a lot of things and helping and helping and helping and all of a sudden you stop. So you're changing the deal, basically, aren't you? Yeah. Yeah, and uh, you know, I I personally think when you change the deal, you're right. The person gets sour, but eventually they step up to the plate, and yeah. both parties are happier because the overfunctioner stops being bitter, and the underfunctioner stops feeling a little bit like incompetence. So yeah. it's a win-win across the board. But you know, it's funny we're talking about this, and we'll come back and talk about the difference between caretaking and kindness. But at the end of the day, there are so many people who come see me and you mm. about this issue, and where they're like doing everything in their relationships, and they're so very bitter about it so if you're one of those people you don't want to go away we'll be right back with straight talk with Sandra Risha and coming back we'll be talking about the difference between being a caretaker and being a kind person and there is a significant difference we'll be right back your life your health your network You're listening to Voice America Health & Wellness. 
Spa Munari is a full-service wellness day spa located at the heart of West Island, Quebec. Submerge yourself in beauty with one of our many treatments, specially catered to your needs. We offer facials, manicures, pedicures, hair removal, massages, body treatments, and so much more. Enjoy our ultimate relaxation experience with our spa packages. We offer a men's menu as well. Call us today to book your next appointment at 514-695-5040 or visit us on the web at spamunari.com. That's 514-695-5040 or spamunari.com. Join the therapist who is affectionately known as the couple whisperer, Sandra Reich, on her famous couple retreats and change your life forever. Sandra offers couple retreats in beautiful locations several times a year that can radically change your love life. Couples describe her retreats as life-changing. Regain that loving feeling. Bring your intimacy to a new level and rediscover excitement and joy. Find out more at helpforanxietydepression.com or call 514-796-4357. We all want love and safety. Now you can have it. Call 514-796-4357 or helpforanxietydepression.com. Change your life forever with the latest cutting-edge products for home study treatment for anxiety, featuring the clinical director of the Montreal Center for Anxiety and Depression and host of Straight Talk, Sandra Reich. Sandra is joined by top therapist Georgia Dow in this revolutionary anxiety videos therapy series. Thousands of people have benefited from this scientifically proven treatment approach. Isn't it time you chose yourself? Visit anxiety-videos.com right now. That's anxiety-videos.com and change your life forever. A fresh look at today's health. Voice America Health & Wellness. You are listening to Straight Talk with Sandra Reich. To connect with the program today, please call 1-866-472-5792. Again, that's 1-866-472-5792. You may also send an email to info at helpforanxietydepression.com. Now, back to Straight Talk. Here's Sandra Reich. So we are back talking about caretaking, the dangers of it. And, you know, the question I want to put out there is, how do you know if you're a caretaker? So um, there are some ways of finding out, and we're going to give you some of them. I'll give you a couple, and Mayte will give you a couple. So one I would ask is, do you find yourself worrying about others more than yourself? Ooh, that's a good one. Yeah, so you know who you are right now. If you're spending your day worrying about your husband or your teenage son, yeah. Uh, What's another one? Well, would you classify yourself as overly responsible? Mm, mm. Yeah, yeah. I'm not always the one responsible above Taking care all of other people. Yeah, yeah, that's a good one. Do you do you find yourself saying yes when you actually want to say no? Somebody says like, "Can you help out on the committee?" and you're like, mm, yeah. "Sure." <laughs> You know, that's another symptom of over caretaking. Yeah, and um, another one is. Do you feel frustrated in your relationships? Well, that's a big oh. one. That's a big clue. Yeah. And that's the number one that I see in my office all the time. Yeah. You, you too? Yeah. You know, yeah. and I, you know, we say females, but they, I also have male caretaker clients. I think you Absolutely. do too. Absolutely. And it's the same problem. It goes either way. It's just females tend to be caretakers more than men do. But, but why? they're that because of the socialization, mm. because our mothers were caretakers, and we've been socialized and encouraged. I was just doing some research, actually, for the retreat on even the way we handle money, is that we have been encouraged that that's our strength, is to take care of others. Yes. And I think that we don't want to throw the baby out with the bathwater. I think we are nurturers, and I think that is wonderful quality. I still want to be a nurturer, and when we talk about caretaking versus kindness, I want to be kind. But if I'm doing everything in my relationship, it's the beginning of the end, or the beginning of big trouble it doesn't work well for either party by the way oh no it doesn't and you know what you you just said it, it raises a, a an image in my head is that when you're doing everything for the other person the only place where we said uh, before where you know the caretaking is kind of okay is with a client and with a child right so, so you're now treating your partner like a client or a child. Oh, that's wonderful. Yeah, I'm sure, yeah, that's they, not I'm work sure out. they'll love that. <laughs> that's not going to work yeah. out. So basically, wow. 
That's it's, yeah. well. I think I think you just hit upon a point why we do it so much, though, because we're we're we, we like being mothers, and I think that there's it's not only on the women. I think there's a strange dynamic also between men and women, where on one hand, uh, women love to mother their their husbands, and husbands to a certain extent invite that role, but they mm. also the moment we slip into it on both parties, it really oh. does a number on the intimacy because when you think about it, like to be blunt, you don't want to sleep with your son, and your son doesn't want to sleep with you. Um, and no. when your when your husband, you know, when you hear these stories of like, oh, my husband, he doesn't know how to do anything. He'd be lost without me. And, oh. and you know, and they talk like this. These are the couples that show up usually where the intimacy is really in question. It does bring up psychobiology, Mayte, which you mm. talk about so well. And and the role of men going back in the day as men as hunters and women's gatherers. Mm. Why is this relevant? What has this got to do with relationships? Well, what it has to do with relationship is basically it's it's in our DNA. So uh, men are hunters. So what does that mean? Well, they they hunt basically. So what does that mean? Well, it translates into you work hard for something, you get it, you get your prize, you're very very happy. You're okay. very happy. Okay. You have a sense of accomplishment. Okay. That is integrated in your DNA. Right. So you work hard, you get your prize, yay, you're good. You feel good about yourself, okay. you feel good about what you just got. Okay, so that brings up, that's great. So that brings up the idea that people value what they work for, especially men, I guess you're saying. Oh, I would definitely say yeah. yes. I guess we all do to well, a certain yes. extent. Yes, yeah. absolutely. I know I know, I do. Yeah. I know I do, but you know, you're right because for the DNA, the men being the hunters, it's it's definitely very, very powerful for them. So if, and we can't ignore DNA. No, we can't ignore DNA. So what happens if, okay, you and I are married right now and you're my husband mm-hmm. and I'm a massive caretaker. So what happens? I'm taking care of you. I'm answering the questions. I'm going, uh, you know, before your needs and everything like that. What happens? What happens to us? Um, I start to sit back. Well, yeah. I start to take you for granted. I would think so. I don't see you as a high value because it comes very easy. So at a click of a finger, I'm just, you don't even have to think of it. I'm just, uh, you know, going before you have a need. I'm just there. I'm just there. Okay. Someone might say that was a long time ago that we were hunters. Are there examples in modern day where you still shows this personality trait in Are there examples where we could see this? Well, like, there might be. Yeah. There might be. So uh, definitely we're uh, right here um, in Canada. There's a lot of people sitting in front of their TVs, mainly men. They're watching uh, a certain sport, you know, five guys on one side, five guys <laughs> on, the other, on the other side, and they're hunting a little puck all around. So basically you're going to go, okay, what was that? Well, what's the enthrallment with this? Yeah. It is still the hunt. It's the hunt. It is still the hunt. It's the hunt. And nothing against it. So sports, no, 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 no. sports Canadians, is like, we like hunt. hockey. Yeah. Well, okay. So it doesn't matter. It can be baseball. It can be football or anything like that. You know, it's yep. the hunt. It is mm-hmm. still the hunt. Okay. We're hunting, you know, pucks and balls and things like that nowadays. Um, so it really is in us, and you yeah. know, to really go after a puck or to go after like something that we have to work hard for. So in fact, if I'm making it really easy on you, it's almost like the energy part of me, like even what what we would call the libido, like not literally, but libido is energy. It's yes. sexual energy, but it's energy would start to go down. Well, you don't need that much energy to get what you actually want. It's like a boring hockey game. Yeah. Like I can just shoot the ball. I keep getting goal after goal after goal. There's no goalie, so whatever. Yeah, exactly. Okay, I get that. Okay, so that's a problem in terms of the dance. Mm -hmm. And then on top of it, I would add in that there is, and I I know you have a lot to say on this. And I should say, by the way, Miss Gomez, that you are also the co-author of a a little book called Once Upon a Time, How Cinderella Grew Up and Became a Happy, Empowered Woman that just may have become a bestseller on the day it came out. Is that true? Hmm. It might be true. It might be true. (laughs) And it's on this topic, isn't it? It is. It is on this topic. We have a a big section on caretaking because it is a massive, massive problem for a lot of people. 
Amazing. A lot of women. Right. So, okay. So to continue on. So yeah, I just wanted to give a plug out to your book. Um, and, and to your book. Yes. Thank you. Attica Odor. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> um, but, you know, just mention it because the book became a bestseller because so many women can relate to this issue and it is such a big issue. So the other piece of this, and that's what reminded me of the book, is that on top of it, the person giving, which often caretakers are females. So we're going to stick with that for now. Yes. We, there's been studies that show, okay, well, I'll let you talk about what happens in terms of the depression. And then I'll talk about the studies on on what happens medically to women who are caretakers, which is really of major concern to me. It is really Okay, but wait a sec. What about depression? We're depression and anxiety specialists. Why are women showing up with depression so much more often than men? Is it related, in fact, to caretaking? Very often it is. Why is that? What's well, the problem? You're, you're, you're giving all of your energy and attention to outside of yourself, to other people. So what happens, and we can even say what happens um, energetically, is that you're, you're really p- putting all of your energy somewhere else. So if you're functioning with a battery and you're putting all the energy into someone else, what's going to happen or somewhere else? Well, your battery is going to you know, get depleted and depleted and depleted and depressed. So when it's depressed, it's depressed. Yeah, depressed. There's nothing in the tank anymore. Nothing in the tank. Which brings me to those very disturbing studies that I remember reading years ago that um, um, female cancers are associated with caretaking disease. Because caretakers feel very guilty to say no, and guilt is very associated with the uh, female cancer personality type. And so it's really quite a concern. We're not just talking about a psychological concept anymore. We're talking about putting our bodies in a bit of danger by doing that. Yeah, it's, it's quite extraordinary actually that they're finding a link between the two. So this is why it is such uh, a, an important topic that we, we want to talk about because it's beyond putting you in trouble in your relationships. It can put you in trouble within your own body. Well, well said. Thank you, Mayte. So uh, we did promise on the segment a little bit, and we'll continue with next segments on the differences between caretaking and kindness. I'll start this one off. So one thing that I talk about is when you're doing an act of kindness, you feel energized yeah. after you do it. Yeah. So you go like give like you want to give like go to a food bank and help out, and it's really an act of kindness. It's a freebie. You feel good about yourself. You, like you said, when you hold the door, when it's caretaking, you feel mm. tired and depleted. Like oh, she has a problem again. Oh, okay, I'm gonna listen to her problems, and that's a symptom. And you know that's not we're not in kindness. We're in caretaking. Absolutely. What are other ways people can know? Well, you can, uh, one other way uh, you can know is how much are you also, how much time are you spending thinking of someone else and of their problems? Okay. Is it always in your mind? Okay. That's not a good sign. Okay. It's not yours to fix. Okay. It's not your problem. Okay. So, uh, again, too much energy, too, too much brain power is spent on someone else's. Uh, problems as if you're in kindness and someone knocks on your door you can go hmm is this a good time for me do I have the energy for this okay so important to also check in with yourself on your battery you mentioned the battery Mm. so is my pocket full can I give to you if I didn't take care of myself first perhaps it might be very tricky for me to give something to you does that make sense well, yes, it does, because if if you come towards me and you go, do you have 10 bucks? And I'm looking in my pocket and I have five and I have to go to the bank to get another five. That just doesn't make sense. So I'm coming from completely empty pockets. So if it makes sense physically, it makes sense emotionally also. So how many people listening right now, um, and you know who you are, are giving with empty pockets? You're the people who are depleted, exhausted. You've been taking care of your kids all day, working. There's Your to-do list never gets done. And you find yourself still giving and giving and giving. That is no longer kindness that is caretaking because you cannot give to others what you do not give to yourself and call it functional. It is dysfunctional. And if, if that's a struggle as you're listening to this, we're going to take a break, but join the conversation. Please call in 1-866-472-5792 or you can write to us on Facebook, Straight Talk Sanitation. We will answer your questions. Um, again, if you're giving with empty pockets, you're on a slippery slope of trouble. We will be right back with Straight Talk with Sandra Reich.
your life, your health, your network. You're listening to Voice America Health & Wellness. Change your life forever with the latest cutting-edge products for home study treatment for anxiety. Featuring the clinical director of the Montreal Center for Anxiety and Depression and host of Straight Talk, Sandra Reich. Sandra is joined by top therapist Georgia Dow in this revolutionary anxiety videos therapy series. Thousands of people have benefited from this scientifically proven treatment approach. Isn't it time you chose yourself? Visit anxiety-videos.com right now. That's anxiety-videos.com and change your life forever. Spa Munari is a full-service wellness day spa located at the heart of West Island, Quebec. Submerge yourself in beauty with one of our many treatments, specially catered to your needs. We offer facials, manicures, pedicures, hair removal, massages, body treatments, and so much more. Enjoy our ultimate relaxation experience with our spa packages. We offer a men's menu as well. Call us today to book your next appointment at 514-695-5040 or visit us on the web at spamunari.com. That's 514-695-5040 or spamunari.com. Join the therapist who is affectionately known as the couple whisperer, Sandra Reich, on her famous couple retreats and change your life forever. Sandra offers couple retreats in beautiful locations several times a year that can radically change your love life. Couples describe her retreats as life-changing. Regain that loving feeling. Bring your intimacy to a new level and rediscover excitement and joy. Find out more at helpforanxietydepression.com or call 514-796-4357. We all want love and safety. Now you can have it. Call 514-796-4357 or helpforanxietydepression.com. Your life, your health, your network. This is Voice America Health & Wellness. You are listening to Straight Talk with Sandra Reich. To connect with the program today, please call 1-866-472-5792. Again, that's 1-866-472-5792. You may also send an email to info at helpforanxietydepression.com. Now, back to Straight Talk. Here's Sandra Reich. So we're back. Lots of people texting us and asking questions about this kindness versus caretaking. Um, so I really want to continue to discuss this. There's so many things to say, and we do have time limits. So I'm going to try to go through with you the most important pieces. So another thing that gets people in trouble is when you're in, when you think you're doing an act of kindness, here's a question you can ask yourself. If you think that you know best, you know, imagine, and, and to be fair, imagine I'm a therapist, like people pay me for this. So like, of course, I'm going to think that I have some good advice to be give people. Mm-hmm. But there's a very big difference between someone coming to my office and soliciting my advice, than offering advice to someone who doesn't ask for advice. Well, that's really a good one. That's important because people generally learn when they need to learn and they they seek out advice when they need to seek out advice and the truth of the matter is that when you think you know best for others you're definitely in the wrong place that's definitely not kindness because I only know what's best for me only trained professionals can give that advice and like I said even then only if someone seeks out that help I mean I'm a trained professional but my husband doesn't want a therapist to come home and tell him what he's doing wrong in life no absolutely not and the same clients who pay me that money if I had met them on the street and gone up to them and told them what they're doing wrong in their life they would have punched me in the face yeah yeah it's, it's, they it's wouldn't appreciate fun. it i mean and it's understandable i mean who likes that you know you're, right you're in the middle of doing something and then someone comes along no 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 this yeah. is not how you do it it's like what yeah no that's, exactly. that's offensive actually yeah yeah and and you know it often enough you know i've seen this often i don't know if you have but you know someone it has actually happened to me you do something and you think it's a nice thing and then the person is mad you go why would that be yeah why would that be yeah so you do something to help them you mean yeah yeah do you have an example of that that sounds like very interesting uh, not lately but um what example I could give you is actually about my mom. You know, sometimes she comes in and she decides that she's going to do laundry. And I'm like, well, why? Right. What is this? You know? And, and, and then, and then you go, but she's so nice. But then I'm like, but I don't need anybody to do my laundry. I can do my own laundry. 
boundary. What is right, this? right. So that brings up the next point is one of the kindest things you can do to somebody is trust in their ability to handle things. <laughs> Wouldn't it be? Yes, exactly. Yeah. Is that so actually we never think of it, but it's an insult. Like it could be an insult. She has good intentions, but it could be an insult to suggest that you're not competent or capable of handling this yourself. That's a great example, actually. Yeah. yeah. Right. So, so sometimes when we do things for others, it actually doesn't give them the opportunity, especially kids, especially teenagers and kids. Oh, yes. Is it, you know, it doesn't give them the opportunity to step up to the plate. Even if they fall on their face, they're learning. They are learning. Right. And, you know, we don't want to rob them of, of this potential of learning. Because if you don't fall, how do you learn? It's, it's very hard, though, for people listening. You know, it's very hard when someone, and this is what people were texting in about, is what do you do if you have a brother with an addiction problem mm. or or a sister who's like, you know they're about to do something that's going to really hurt their life or um, a husband who's deeply depressed, you know, and how do you handle those situations? And what we're saying is basically that we have to sort of let people, to a certain extent, figure it out themselves. We're not saying that we turn our back on them, but we can't fix people. That's the thing even therapists can't fix people nope. people fix themselves and yeah. so people get really shocked they say to me like well how could you even suggest that like what am I supposed to do I see him in pain I surely should have to do something well you could give them the number of a good therapist but yeah. he still has to dial the number yeah so that's another symptom of someone who's fallen to dysfunctional caretaking is they tend to be anxious or depressed themselves yeah so, so suddenly they have a problem they have you have, noticed that? Yes, they have a problem, and usually it's not their own problem. Right. So you go, it's running into your system, in, into your whole, your own body. You have this anxiety about something that isn't yours. How is that going to work? Yeah. That's not going to work. But yeah. it is really hard. You know, I, if I see my children in pain or if I would see my husband in pain, yes. my natural instinct would be I want to rescue. But, you know, rescuing is dysfunctional. It's we don't rescue people. Again, we can support people. There's a very big difference. Huge difference. Huge difference. And I think that there's also, you know, you take out the anxiety that the other person is going to have pain. Yes, they are going to have pain. It's okay. It's okay. But if you're there and you're non-judging and you're supporting... I prefer to receive that. What about you? Me too. But, you know, I'll ask you what people are asking me is, you know, people have fears sometimes. Like, what if, someone asked me this week this question, what if um, your teenage or, you know, young adult child is seems depressed and if you don't do something to rescue them, something could happen? Mm. What about that question? I mean, that's a really tough question. So what do you do with that? I'm curious what you'd say. Well, first of all, if you do something, there is no guarantees nothing will happen anyway. Right. And and if they're depressed, that means they're in pain. And they need that pain to be motivated to move towards feeling better. That's such a great answer. You're such a smart cookie. Because oh my God. the truth of the matter, it was a brilliant answer because the bottom line is that, and as I always say to people, no one ever showed up in my office in the history no. of what I've been doing when they weren't in enormous pain. People are only motivated to change when they're in pain. Yeah. So if we take away the pain, they can't change. Can't that was change. so succinct and so brilliant. Um, it brings up one more point that I want to make sure to get out there to see if you've fallen into dysfunctional caretaking ask yourself do you have a preponderance of needy people around you these days oh. um dysfunctional caretaking will attract people with problems to you so if you find yourself wondering why everyone comes to you with their problem you've probably fallen into the trap of caretaking because mm, it won't happen otherwise no right no. because if you answer people with their problems like oh i'm so sorry i hope you work that out they're not coming back to you they want someone to no. Give Not them. the needy ones, anyway. No, no. And and I think that we have a tendency to attract the people that you know have you know some similar problems. So if I'm needing to fix, which is basically the same thing as needing to control, right. then I'm going to attract people who need to be fixed or need to be controlled. Well said. Well said. And, so, uh, I would say it's a drug addiction at yeah, that point. Yeah, on both, yeah. both sides, actually. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And if you're coming from kindness, that you know that you are going to take care of yourself, that is important. And actually, if you do take care of yourself, that you're going to have more to give to others. So you're not supposed to be bleeding yourself to death, that you take care of yourself, then you will attract probably, you know, and that's usually what happens, people who 
are actually able to take care of themselves too. And then the relationship would be more on reciprocity. So yes. to make it clear for people, like you can be good friends and you could go through so a little bit of a tough time and mm. I could be sort of supportive of you and vice versa. I don't want anyone to think that we can't be kind anymore because we absolutely can. But there's a very big difference. That dance of rescue fix is the dysfunctional dance. Absolutely. It cannot work. We want people to care. We do want people to care. We want more caring people in this world. It's very important. And, you know, it does bring up another point on a show on caretaking. One of the people that influenced me so much in my career is a woman who wrote a book called Codependent No More, a book that changed my life. Her name is Melody Beattie. And she has a line in that book. And I honestly think it might be the most brilliant line I've ever read in all the books I've read, a big uh, book reader, which says, and think about this for a moment, you cannot caretake and have a boundary at the same time. Now, that's an amazing concept because at first people say, yes, you can. Mm -hmm. But think about it. You can't. So that means to be a good caretaker, I can't have boundaries. And that's a problem. It is a problem. Okay, because you become more important than me. Yeah. So I can love you, but I got to love me more. Absolutely. Yeah, like the oxygen mask on the airplane. Yeah, and if I kind of love me but I love you a lot, a lot, a lot, I love you more, then is that really love anyway? You know, it's not. Ah, yeah. Because I need for you to be okay. I need for you to be a certain way for me to be okay. I mean, it's 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 messed up. Yeah, yeah. So, so of course, I'm going to start to try to control you. Because yeah. if you're not okay, I'm in the pit. Yeah. You need me to be okay for you to be okay. Oh. And... You can't have any boundaries. So I, this is when you get a call from someone saying, I can't believe he or she treats me with such disrespect. And how could they treat me this way? I've been there for them so much. But the, of course, they're that way because there are no boundaries in place. Yes. There are no boundaries. So if I say, I'm sorry, I can't get together with you tonight, Mayte. You're going through a hard time. I'm sorry, I can't get through can't get scared because I have something else. Radio the, show. Yeah, a radio <laughs> show. The kind thing would be to say, but no, tomorrow I have some time for you. But a true caretaker would cancel the radio show because they would say, well, it's it's just a radio show and she's in trouble. Yes. Okay. And that may sound kind, but it's fraught with many psychological difficulties, including resentment. Oh, of course. And also you suddenly have become more important than me and you're important. Yeah. But I got to be important too. Yeah, of course. And then every Thursday I have a problem. Right. I'm calling you and you have to cancel your no radio show. No more straight talk. No more so straight my talk. my goodness, then there's going to be huge resentment. But that's, yeah, that that can happen. Line. Great that line. That can happen. Yeah, so you can't care to take and have a boundary at the same time. And boundaries are absolutely essential to healthy adult relationships and parent-to-child relationships. So, oh, yeah. And you can't care to take and have a boundary at the same time. So, uh, Houston, we have a problem. We have a big problem here. So we got to find a way to be kind and still respect our boundaries. So if someone asks you for something, you want to be able to be kind and help them or do whatever you can for them, but not at the expense of yourself. That's an old thing that we've learned that we're supposed to, you know, like when they say, um, treat your neighbor as you would treat yourself. I think that we're missing the point of that. I think the real point is, listen to it carefully. Treat your neighbor as you would treat yourself. You have to treat yourself well before you treat your neighbor well. You have to know what that's like. There you go. You yeah, have to you know go. what that's like. If you're not treating yourself well, then you don't know what you're talking about. Right. And on the famous airplane oxygen mask, yes. you get on an airplane. It always is so fascinating to me that in an emergency, you would have to put your oxygen mask ahead of your own child. Now, why is that? Shouldn't I just take care of my child first? Well, you could, but then you might die and your child is going to be an orphan. So yeah. I don't think it's a good idea. Right. 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 So, so yeah, that would be uh, wonderful caretaking, but then, you know, the price is huge. So no, you got to take care of yourself first. Why? Because ultimately this is when you have real good to give to the world. That, oh, that's really, I'm so glad you went there. That's exactly where I, my point is that you have to, um, if you take care of yourself, you have something to offer the world, something to give. Yeah. And also you become a role model Absolutely. of what healthy and happy looks like. Yes. I put it on me. Okay, now we're not on the airplane, I'm using it metaphorically. I fill my pockets, take some time for myself. Maybe it's not a radio show. Maybe I need to sleep. I'm exhausted. I can't be of help to you. Yes. I take some time for me. It appears selfish at first, but I come back because then I'm feeling great and I can really be there for you, Mayte. Yeah. yeah. And I can also role model that yeah. you can also take time for yourself. Absolutely. Right. And, and I would say, I would even go further than this, is that when you're on the receiver end, you know. You feel it when it's kindness. 
Yeah. And you feel it when it's caretaking because when it's caretaking, you feel you're you're feeling controlled. Oh yeah, you do. Okay, we're going to take a break and we're going to talk about this concept of selfishness when we come back because a lot of people still feel taking care of themselves is selfish. Mm-hmm. So I want to spend a little time on that. Is that okay with you, Miss Mate? Oh, I love it. We will be right back on Straight Talk with Sandra Rich. You're listening to Voice America Health and Wellness. Join the therapist who is affectionately known as the couple whisperer, Sandra Reich, on her famous couple retreats and change your life forever. Sandra offers couple retreats in beautiful locations several times a year that can radically change your love life. Couples describe her retreats as life-changing. Regain that loving feeling, bring your intimacy to a new level, and rediscover excitement and joy. Find out more at HelpForAnxietyDepression.com or call 514-796-4357. We all want love and safety. Now you can have it. Call 514-796-4357 or HelpForAnxietyDepression.com. Change your life forever with the latest cutting-edge products for home study treatment for anxiety, featuring the clinical director of the Montreal Center for Anxiety and Depression and host of Straight Talk, Sandra Reich. Sandra is joined by top therapist Georgia Dow in this revolutionary anxiety videos therapy series. Thousands of people have benefited from this scientifically proven treatment approach. Isn't it time you chose yourself? Visit anxiety-videos.com right now. That's anxiety-videos.com and change your life forever. Spa Munari is a full-service wellness day spa located at the heart of West Island, Quebec. Submerge yourself in beauty with one of our many treatments, specially catered to your needs. We offer facials, manicures, pedicures, hair removal, massages, body treatments, and so much more. Enjoy our ultimate relaxation experience with our spa packages. We offer a men's menu as well. Call us today to book your next appointment at 514-695-5040 or visit us on the web at spamunari.com. That's 514-695-5040 or spamunari.com. Your life, your health, your network. This is Voice America Health & Wellness. You are listening to Straight Talk with Sandra Reich. To connect with the program today, please call 1-866-472-5792. Again, that's 1-866-472-5792. You may also send an email to info at helpforanxietydepression.com. Now, back to Straight Talk. Here's Sandra Reich. We are back on a topic that Maytay and I find ourselves talking about all the time. I mean, we're leaving on, on our 13th retreat. How <laughs> often does caretaking and boundaries come up at those women's retreats? Every single one. Yeah, yeah. It's, and it's, it's, it's really like a movement almost at this point to talk about the dangers of caretaking and, and how it's not selfish to take care of yourself. We were having a great talk with my new producer, A-Rod, on the break, and he's fabulous, uh, about the concept of selfishness. Is it selfish to take care of yourself? I mean, we, as women, tend to think it is. Uh, I think men are much better at this, and I think yeah. this is not a diss on men. I think we need to learn from men. I agree. Yeah. I completely agree, because where are we if we're not taking care of ourselves? Well, we're back, right back into the caretaking, and that's dysfunctional, so. And we're very angry at men for taking care of themselves. <laughs> I know for myself for years, I was, like, really annoyed at, like, my husband's, like, like need to respect his own boundaries and Mm -hmm. to, you know, if he needed more time to sleep or whatever he needed, he just did it. And I, as a a therapist, I became curious about my resentment and I realized that it's a secret envy. Yes, it is. He needs sleep. He gives it to himself. I need sleep. I say, okay, Sandra, you have work to do. Get up. So, yeah. And that's not so healthy, actually. Actually, it's not. No. It's really not. Right. So taking care of yourself is not selfish. It's not. It's the best self-care. It's the best self-care. It's the best self-care. And it's- why do women think it's selfish to say no to people and to t- take time for themselves? Why Why is this so deeply ingrained in us? Well, it's definitely been socialized this way. And you're afraid that you're going to be looked at the selfish one, right? Yeah. 
oh no you're not nice you're selfish how could you say no yeah so it's it's there's an unconscious manipulation there too is that is. i guess society we have to say does reinforce caretaking society tells you that it's good if you self-sacrifice you should self-sacrifice that's what good girls do and that's what good people do is self-sacrifice and take care of others and stop focusing so much on yourself and it's 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 like I, I think we can focus too much on ourselves, but I think that it's gone too far. It's gone to the point that if I take time and check, how am I doing? How am I feeling? You know what? I need to take a day off work. The other voice in my head for most people, and, and certainly myself, I'm a recovering caretaker, mm-hmm. would be, but I'm going to let down all these people. Yes. I'm going to let them down. And then I, even if I take the day off, I'll suffer all day. So it's fear of rejection then. It's it's fear. Yeah, I don't know about rejection. I feel like it's like it's guilt. I will disappoint. Oh, just mm. I don't think they're going to go away. But it's like, again, it's very unnatural. I've learned it now. And I, I, I do call yeah. in sick. No problem. But I've <laughs> learned but to not... Uh, feel so responsible but I was really taught as I think many of us were yes. that I'm responsible and as a therapist I'm responsible for these people and I'm, you know whatever it may be I'm responsible I don't want to disappoint anyone else but that again is saying that someone else is more important than you isn't it yes it is and that's not good because we've learned in this hour that's not healthy no no, oh, now, where does it play out for you? Where does, you know, because caretakers suffer guilt and you're also a recovering caretaker. You know, do you struggle with that also if you have to say no to someone or? Oh, yes, I, I really feel uh, quite bad. But then I laugh at myself because I'm like, OK, it's the disease talking, basically. It's the disease. But, it, you know, it's it's really this. Uh, I see many women going through this is juggling everything. You know, you cannot say yes to your husband, your kids, your family, your work, your friends, your community all on Tuesday it's just not possible so, so and someone's yeah. going to be disappointed yes of and, course and you know it's almost like right before we started the show we were having a conversation with my daughter about a birthday party yes. and it's almost like that like you have to also you want to make your children happy but you also have to check in and that's I think the key is to check in is is this going to be manageable for me also not only to please the other person is this going to be manageable for me yeah so what should people do you know we're getting to that time of the show what should people do to really get out of this disease because again it is we call ourselves recovering caretakers because it is I really think it's like alcoholism I think that I'm you know I'm only as good as my strategies Mm -hmm. I think it's very easy to fall into taking care of others I actually like taking care of other people I mean I am a professional caretaker so are you Um, so what are the strategies that people should do to make sure that they're not slipping into dysfunctional caretaking well I give you one Um, you can ask yourself if it's your business oh that's a good one what else do you have well, let's stand that for one second. Is it my business? What does that mean? Hmm. What does it mean? Is it my business? So my husband's eating a lot of ice cream. Is that that's the one I use in this example? So is it my business? Actually, no. It's not my business. Now people argue, yes, it will. It will shorten his life. It's still not my business. No. But I'll show. I'll throw you a twist. If he gains two hundred pounds and I don't find him sexually attractive anymore, is it my business now? Yes, it is. Yes, it is. So what's the difference between those two? Ah, the difference between those two is that you, you, in one, you want to control the person right now. Stop eating, stop eating. And the other one is you can go to your husband. Okay, it's going to be an un- uncomfortable talk, but to go, listen, the way you're deciding to lead your life right now, I'm sorry, I'm not finding you, you attractive. So you can do what you want with that. Yes, to me, the first example, if he wants to eat ice cream to the point that he's going to live a shorter life, that's his life, his choice. Yes. The second example, if you're not sexually attractive to me, that now now it infringes on my life. Yeah. So that business comment is a good strategy. What's your business? So you have to check with yourself before you get involved with telling someone the error of their ways if it's your business or not what else can I do or someone do to make sure that they're not finding themselves like if how can they make sure that they don't care takes too much like what do they need to do to take care of themselves like are there strategies well there's definitely a lot of strategies I mean what what are you sleeping enough are you having fun are you taking care of yourself basically what do you do to replenish what do you do for yourself so what do you do to replenish? Oh, I love yoga. Uh, yeah, we do that. Yeah, we do. We we do that. Yeah, we do yoga. I I also like uh, anything uh, tactile. Tactile. I see her crafts. hands going. <laughs> anything that the crafts or anything like that. So I I like uh, projects like that just to get creative. 
Okay, so my and my strategy on this would be that I try very hard to check that I'm I'm not giving like my pockets don't get empty. Mm-hmm. So I love giving; it's a pleasure. Um, but I have to make sure that my food, sleep, exercise are under control. Yes. Very basic stuff. Um, Mate Gomez, the name of the book is what? Once upon a time. How Cinderella grew up and became a happy, empowered woman. And they can find the book on Amazon.com, Amazon.ca. Yeah. I'm pretty sure any Amazon, or if you're local, you can come see us at the clinic. Call us at 514-777-4530 to pick up your copy. Um, I can't thank you enough. It's always, uh, truthfully, and it's not for the radio, this is true. I mean, it's all true, of course, but I'm (laughs) not saying it just for our audience. It's, you know, talking to you, it never gets dull about this topic. You always put a different spin on it. It's so interesting, and I'm so happy to have you on the show, and I'm so happy to be going on this retreat with you. If people want to find out more about the retreats, what should they do, by the way? How do they find out? Well, you can go on Empowered Woman Workshop. Dot com. Dot com. Mm-hmm. And uh, check out uh, our website, get some more information on the topic, the topic we have this weekend and the one we'll have coming uh, next year and uh, so on and so forth. You'll find also ways to get in contact directly with us. Fantastic. So I'd really like to thank you for being on the show, Mate, and we we'll hope we'll see you here back again. Absolutely. It's so much fun. I'll be back. Thank you. I'd also like to thank our listeners uh, from all over the world for listening to Straight Talk with Sandra Rich. It's such an honor to have this opportunity. Uh, I'd like to invite all of you back to come back next week. And if you're interested, as I mentioned, on our retreat therapy or any media that was mentioned, you can go on helpforanxietydepression.com. You can also, I don't know if you know this, Maytay, you can go on straighttalksandarish.com and put a forward slash free gifts and get all sorts of freebies that are really nice gifts. So check that out. Go also on our Facebook page, Straight Talk Sandra Reich, and you can leave a question for me or for Mayte or any of our guests. And don't forget to like our page. Um, also, good to know is that you can hear this show and any prior show as a podcast on my website, straighttalksandareesh.com, on the podcast app of your iPhone, or on iTunes under Straight Talk with Sandra Reich. Drop me a comment or a question anytime at info at helpforanxietydepression.com. Again, that's info at helpforanxietydepression.com. Finally, if you're a professional and you're looking for keynote speakers or training on anxiety, depression, emotional regulation, or living a purposeful life, remember, I'm your source for evidence-based practice and education. My name is Sandra Reich, and I promise I'll help you learn to live your best life again next Thursday, same channel, same time. In the meanwhile, this is Straight Talk with Sandra Reich. Keep your eyes on the stars. Thank you for listening to Straight Talk with Sandra Reich. We hope you've enjoyed today's show and we'll tune in again next Thursday at 3 p.m. Pacific Time, 6 p.m. Eastern Time on the Voice America Health and Wellness Channel. Now, go live your best life. Thanks again for listening to the preceding program brought to you on the Voice America Health and Wellness Channel. For more information about our network and to check out additional show hosts and topics of interest, please visit voiceamericahealth.com. The Voice America Talk Radio Network is the worldwide leader in live internet talk radio. Visit voiceamerica.com. The views and ideas expressed on the preceding program are strictly those of the host or guests and do not necessarily reflect the views and ideas held by the Voice America Talk Radio Network. It's staff and management.